Hi guys, this is Todd Fool, and for today, we're going to quickly discuss streamers and their digital output sound quality. If you're an old school digital person like me, it's time to ditch that Chromecast audio and go for that $8,000 render music server. Well, I'm not really that much of an audio fool yet. There are substantial differences going from the Chromecast audio to the CXN and Node 2, so I can only assume that there will be similar improvements going to a higher end streamer. But while some people prefer to maximize their source first, I prefer to start at the end, meaning buy the best speakers you can afford first, and then amp, and then room treatment, then DAC and streamer. And that way, you'll be able to maximize your listening pleasure. Of the two streamers we have today, my personal preference is the Node 2, but there will be people who want to use a remote or like to see what's playing, and the CXN is for those people. For me though, I'm actually quite okay using my phone to control the music since I'm easily able to choose the playlist and choose the songs, and I found it hard to use a remote to control the music. And as a bonus, it also actually sounds very decent as a standalone DAC, meaning even without an external DAC like the shit Yggdrasil, the Blue Sound Note 2 by itself already sounds very good, and it also plays MQA. But whether MK is better, that's another story. If you're using a streaming service like Spotify, Tidal, Amazon, or you have a digital library at home, you'll need a streamer to send your music to your audio system. It can be as simple as a phone or a computer, or you can use specialized gear. Here, we have three different streamers of varying sizes and prices. The cheapest one, the sadly discontinued $35 Chromecast Audio, the $550 Blue Sound Note 2, and the $900 Cambridge CXN. I was actually happy with my Chromecast audio shooting out the digital output to my shit Yggdrasil DAC because I believe that all digital signals are the same. I mean, I haven't noticed a difference for 4K Netflix on my computer or Roku, Shield TV, or the one built in the TV. So I just use the one on the TV as they're pretty much the same. And if there was some corruption of the signal somewhere, it should come out blank or just pause while buffering. Then I bought a Blue Sound node, but I bought it for the interface. I didn't really give a thought if they had difference in sound quality. It was only when I lent a Chromecast audio to a friend who was considering selling this CXN and he said maybe I shouldn't sell at all because it sounds a lot better than a Chromecast. So let's find out if zeros and ones are not just zeros and ones. But before that, let's take a closer look. The Chromecast audio is just a puck using USB 4 power and a hybrid 3.5mm analog optical out. This is very subtle and you can like stick it at the back somewhere and just hide it from plain view. It doesn't have a unified app but most streaming apps can be casted to the Chromecast so it shouldn't be an issue especially if you're just using one. The Blue Sound Node 2 is a matte black affair, not very pretty but stealthy enough to be unnoticeable in the dark corners of your hi-fi rack. You have optical coax analog outs and even a subwoofer output. It also has Bluetooth built in and a hybrid optical analog in if you need to connect a turntable or something. No remote but the Blue OS app ranks as the best music app for me. The CXN looks very nice with an LED screen to show what's playing and you definitely want to showcase it. It comes with a remote, good for old school peeps, and it can control the other CX gears if you have them. It goes a little bit further than the Blue Sound Node by offering balance out and separate inputs for USB and wired internet. All testing was done with the shit Ragnarok, Yggdrasil, and Kef LS50. In the Chromecast audio versus the Cambridge Audio CXN, the CXN was a clear winner. The bass definition in the CXN was a lot higher and it also gave more resolution, more space between instruments, and the vocals seemed clearer as well. Piano notes and vocals are richer and highs are a little bit more extended. 
I wasn't really expecting this, but there is a significant improvement going from the Chromecast Audio to the Cambridge Audio CXN. With the Cambridge Audio CXN versus the Bluesound node, the differences were more subtle but still there. The CXN had louder bass but wasn't as well defined as the Bluesound node. Vocals are slightly more detailed and striations in the voice are more apparent in the Bluesound node, but they aren't as rich as in the CXN. Timber seems to be better balanced in the blue sound node. Strings sound more dynamic and more forceful, and there's also a little bit more sparkle and brilliance, and a sharper bite with the node. Soundstage is so slightly bigger in the CXN, but again, all of these are very subtle. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or suggestions, just write them down below. See you in the next video!